So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we're gonna go over the best settings and file management workflow when it comes time for your prints to be printed at Bayphoto Labs. All right, so here we are, Bayphoto support page. I'm gonna walk you guys through a step-by-step -step procedure on their file preparation guidelines, their best practices, and show you some real life examples of what you should be doing. Um, explain the mindset as well. Why would you choose one thing over another? So in this section, I just wanna cover right now uh, some generalized tips and tricks. So first things first, tip number one, uh, do not resize your images. Bay Photo Labs will already resize the images based on the product that you purchase and select. Uh, based on the size, whether it be an eight by 10, a 10 by 12, a 12 by 16, a 16 by 20, whatever the size of the product that you are purchasing, uh, they will resize the image that you send them and you upload to their labs. Uh, they will resize that accordingly to make sure you get the highest quality uh, print and reproduction from the image that you send them. So do not resize your images. Uh, tip number two is going to be uh, understand and know, this is very critical, uh, that Bay Photo does offer free color correction of the images that you send them. Now, why is that important? Well, if you are in a situation like I was for a very long time uh, where I didn't have access to color calibrated equipment, uh, most notably a color calibrated monitor, and I wasn't, I wasn't really familiar with the workflow in terms of color management, how do you go from your camera shooting in a raw, um, a raw format to then editing and working through that and then printing and, and making sure that you ensure that the lab is gonna get, or your printer, if you're printing at home, uh, how are you gonna ensure that the colors are translating accurately from what you see in your camera to then what you edit to then what the final print looks like? That is a huge workflow process. But if you're a beginner, um, just know that Bay Photo offers free color correction so you can bypass the whole process. Essentially what happens um, when, you, when you enable this, and I will show you here shortly how to do that, but um, what happens when you enable this, they're technicians, they have a seasoned, seasoned staff of technicians that are knowledgeable in color correcting. Uh, they have color calibrated devices, so they're gonna receive your image in some way, and they're gonna color correct what they are perceiving to match the colors that you sent them so that it translates, and when you get your print, your, what you saw on your screen is largely what you're gonna get. Uh, now, there is some variation in that based on you know the color accuracy of your device, but uh, overall, what you're seeing and what you sent them is what they're gonna give you back. Now, if you don't check that, uh, essentially what's gonna happen, they're gonna print exactly what you sent them. Uh, and that's gonna put you in a situation where you may get flustered or upset because what you saw when you upload the image is not what they actually saw and that, that's what they're gonna send you because you uh, didn't click that, that, specific, um, that specific option in the checkout. But let me go into this section right now. Let me show you guys where that is. Now I'm gonna show you guys this in Bayros, uh, which Bayros is essentially their, their desktop application. Uh, when it comes time to customizing an order, uploading images, um, and, and they basically have compiled this software uh, application to make it easier. Uh, just in case you know the website is having some kind of issues or whatever, you can actually save this as, as an offline tool and use it and create orders and then just submit it when you have access to, to the internet. But uh, suffice it to say, uh, after you've started your order, you've created your order, uh, you add it to your cart here. The color correction that I'm referring to and why I'm making such a big point out of this and why this is so important, I'm just gonna spend like minutes on this, uh, is because uh, the color correction, it's included, it's free. Um, and why this is important is because if you do not check this, you tell them that you don't want color correction, you're telling them to basically print the photo as is. Now, if you don't have a color calibrated monitor, you're not seeing what the, the colors of your image really are. Uh, and that is the issue. So um, I don't want you, to, you guys to be set up for failure, especially since we're gonna be doing a giveaway here at some point. Uh, so you will be walking yourself through this process. Um, I, I wanna make sure that when we give you images and prints and we do giveaways and stuff, uh, that you're getting the image that, that you captured. Um, so for that reason, ensure that you're, you're enabling color correction so that what they see from the upload that you send them is what they're gonna give you. If not, that's not gonna be the situation. Now, if you have color calibrated devices, you have an external monitor, you have a color checker, uh, you shoot with a passport when you do that and you're, you're really meticulous about your colors, I would definitely encourage you to make sure you do no color calibration because they will then add color calibration and change your colors. So um, that's, that's really what I wanted to cover there. 
Now, uh, the most important part and the whole reason that you guys clicked this video, what are the, the exporting settings? Uh, what are the best practices when it comes uh, settings uh, as far as exporting and then uploading it to Bayros? Uh, what does Bay Photo really need to make sure that you're getting the highest quality image that you can possibly print? Um, so they do have a guideline on this. I'm gonna walk you guys through this very, very quickly. So um, essentially, uh, there's multiple different kind of bit depths when it comes to color. We will do a separate video specifically on bit depths and color gamuts, but um, long story short, your the settings need to be, it has to be an 8-bit RGB or sRGB. Uh, it has to be a JPEG, a TIFF, or a PNG file. Um, and I'm gonna give you guys some secrets here. Uh, TIFF is the easiest. And the image has to be flattened if it's, if it's a TIFF. Now, let me walk you guys through that process I'm gonna do it both in Capture One and uh, Adobe Photoshop, but I do wanna say these export settings are exactly the same for Adobe Lightroom. They're the exact same for Adobe Camera Raw. They're the exact same for Luminar 4. They're the exact same for um, uh, uh, Affinity Photo. Uh, these export settings are, are universal in every single photo editing imaging application. I'm gonna show you in Capture One and Adobe Photoshop just because that's what I have right now. Um, and I will give you some hints on Adobe Lightroom if you, uh, if you need that. So essentially in, in your export preferences for your application, what you're going to do, this is a, in Capture One, if you're not familiar, this is, it loads raw images and it, and it manipulates and adds adjustment layers on top of raw photos. And then in your export preferences, you determine how it's gonna push those out. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys the secret right now, use TIFF files. Um, the main reason it, why is because TIFF is going to be, have basically the least amount of compression, uh, so they're gonna get a higher resolution image. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to basically export down to JPEG um, or PNG unless you're already shooting in camera and you're not shooting raw. Uh, if you're in that situation, then JPEG is what you shot, so you have to send them JPEGs. But um, otherwise, if you're shooting raw, uh, which I definitely encourage you guys to do, uh, definitely um, make sure you're exporting as a TIFF. Um, in every single application, you will have an option to choose the bit depth, whether that be 8-bit or 16-bit. Bayphoto, based on their technology and their workflow and their process, they can only do 8-bit files. They do not have access to print um, these products in 16-bit. Um, the next thing is going to be un like your, your compression method. When it comes to TIFF, you've got zip, LZW, and uncompressed. Just do uncompressed every single time. The next option that you have is gonna be your ICC profile, which essentially is your color space. Um, the exporting settings of every application is gonna name this differently, but this is referred to as your color space. Uh, the best one to choose is Adobe RGB. You don't need to go to sRGB, which is a smaller version of Adobe RGB. And then as far as resolution, Bayphoto does a maximum of 250 pixels per inch PPI. Um, so make sure this is set to PPI. And uh, from there, you can export the, the TIFF file. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. I'm gonna show you guys the workflow that I just covered really quickly in Capture One. We're gonna also do that as a raw image um, in Adobe Photoshop. So basically what I did here, I opened up Photoshop, I did file open, and then I opened up a raw image, which, uh, which prompts basically Photoshop to open up camera raw. From here, you would just do your normal adjustments, but what I'm actually going to change is are the settings right here. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do, you have a couple options when it comes to your color space right here if you're going to be opening up a raw image. Um, make sure this is set to uh, either sRGB, if, if you want a smaller color space, but ideally just set this to Adobe RGB. Make sure the bit depth is set to eight bits per channel. Uh, do not resize this, just leave it at whatever you're captured for your image, um, your camera, your camera sensor was, and then set your resolution to 250 PPI. From this point, you would hit open image, and then now you'd have your image as a raw file uh, into Adobe Photoshop. You would do your retouching, you'd kind of make it look all nice and sexy, uh, and then from here, you'd be at a point where, okay, like I finished editing my image, uh, you know, I, I did my curves and all, all, all my stuff. It's looking great. Uh, okay, then what do I do now? So I'm ready to, to actually save and export this. Well, you go up here to file save as. You would change the format down to TIFF, and then you would make sure embed color profiles Adobe RGB is checked. And then once this is saved, save it to your desktop or wherever, wherever you would like. 
Um, and from there, we can import that into Bayros, and that is what we're gonna translate and send to uh, Bay Photo Labs for them to print. I do wanna also say as a very important note, make sure that if you're working in this, uh, in, in Photoshop, that you merge all your layers, you compress everything down. Um, another thing that Bay, Bay Photo is uh, particular about is making sure that you don't name your files with any special characters. Uh, that causes a, a slowdown in their workflow as well. And that will also cause a renaming fee and uh, delay them getting your products back to you. But this right here is the general basic workflow um, between whether it be Capture One or Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, all of these applications have these export preferences. The last section that I want to cover in this video is going to be talking about the, uh, basically the file sizes and talking about the resolution requirements. So on their website as well, they have various sizes when it comes to prints, whether it be ranging from four by six all the way up to 30 by 40. Uh, for most of the APS-C, uh, whether it be mirrorless, DSLR, or Micro Four Thirds for this matter, uh, most of these cameras will be by default shooting um, and capturing images somewhere between 3,000 pixels by to 4,000 pixels, upwards of 5,000 by 6,000 pixels, uh, depending on their sensor size. Um, and essentially what, what this section of the website and why this is important um, is there are minimum res resolution requirements to ensure that when you send uh, a print to their labs that it, it's gonna be a high quality image. Otherwise, what happens if you send them an image that's too small and too low resolution for the print size that you're wanting, uh, essentially what happens is that the pixels get stretched and the quality in terms of sharpness and contrast, it degrades pretty significantly. So. Um, for the safest bet, the workflow that I just showed you guys with exporting TIFFs will solve this issue because this TIFF is going to be exported at 100% re like resolution. It's not going to resize, it's not going to crop, more so than what you already did in Photoshop or Lightroom or Luminar 4 or et cetera, whatever platform you're using. So that won't necessarily be an issue. However, if you're in a situation where you're sending them JPEGs or PNG photos, you wanna make sure that at, at the bare minimum, if you're going to, let's say you're gonna do 30 by 40, you send them an image that's 1625 by 2166. Uh, to be safe, just do 2000 by 3000 if you're going to resize an image for whatever reason. Um, so that essentially that covers your entire bases for all of the print sizes that they offer. Um, you'd be good from anywhere from 30 to 40 all the way down to four by six and eight by 10. So uh, I just wanted to cover that as well. Uh, for me, the camera that I use, it does 4,000 by 5,000. That's just by default. So I would be totally good um, for all of these. I, it just exporting as a TIFF, I'd be covered for all of these. Now, if you wanted maximum detail, this section over here is saying uh, the recommended sizes. So 7,500 by 10,000. Uh, if you have like a Sony A7R Mark III, um, a Nikon D810, uh, if you have a Canon 5DSR, uh, there's a there's a, a plethora of, of high resolution cameras on the market, but those cameras would be able to give you these kind of um, these dimensions from their sensors just because they have lar larger sensors. Um, but that's that's the maximum that they can do. If you're if you have a camera that is medium format, you say a Fujifilm GFX 100, I, I would imagine it probably does. 14 or 15,000 by 16, 17,000. Uh, so you'd actually have to resize your images because it wouldn't actually be able to print for these sizes. But for most, most of us that do not have these, you know, these $10,000 cameras, uh, this won't be a specific issue, but I just wanted to cover that as well. But this kind of wraps up this section of the tutorial as well. I hope you guys found a little bit of value in this. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier in the video, we will be doing a giveaway. It's part of the reason why I wanted to do this particular video is showing you guys the best practice because one of you lucky lucky people in the audience will be getting your print your your uh, your very own print and I want to make sure that you are getting the highest quality product that we can possibly give you um, not only that I, I wanted to uh, you know kind of help help out the team over at Bay Photo for supporting us and um, and just building that relationship uh, so thank you Mallory for sending us some prints which is over there um, and I just want to say thank you everyone um, over at their team you guys are doing awesome and we are happy to collaborate with you guys um, I've been your host, Devon Linux. I hope you found value out of this video. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. 
If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. Photography. <laughs> 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 <laughs>